Today we're gonna test something from Jurassic Park we all take for granted. Does a dinosaur's footsteps actually shake the ground? Can you feel or hear a T-Rex approaching? And we're gonna explore some of the special effects they used in the movie to sell the idea of dino footsteps. Our dinosaur foot analog will be this. I call it the Dino Stomper. This is an ecology block. It weighs 4,000 pounds, which is the same as a Hellcat or your mom. In Jurassic Park, there's a shot where we see a puddle ripple when a T-Rex is approaching. So I dug one just like it and we'll be keeping an eye on it during the tests. So we wanna know if the movie accurately represents T-Rex footsteps. And to know if we've achieved success, we're gonna be measuring in two ways. Subjectively, we'll be standing nearby the block to describe if we felt the ground shake and if we could hear it. Objectively, we're gonna be watching the puddle and the cup of water on the dashboard to see if it ripples just like in the movie. There are way too many variables that I could be testing here. Momentum of running, a heel toe step, dinosaur feet being flesh and not concrete, the ground not being muddy, the type of soil. All of that is way too much and I'm gonna keep things simple. I figure we can just take what we think a dinosaur would have weighed, the distance its foot would fall taking a step and then find the kinetic energy of that. Weight falling from a certain height. Then all we have to do is take what we know our dino stomper to weigh and then find out how high we need to drop it to match that kinetic energy. This science isn't bulletproof, but without having an actual T-Rex, we're gonna have to make some assumptions. And that's kind of just how engineering works sometimes, right? And I'm not an expert on this stuff, so take what I say with a grain of salt. We'll be dropping from three heights today. First, three and a half feet to simulate one quarter of the energy of a full-grown T-Rex running. Perhaps to simulate if it's walking slowly or a really small one, I kind of arbitrarily picked one quarter. Then at 14 feet to simulate a full-grown T-Rex sprinting. This would be a best case scenario for feeling the footsteps. And if that doesn't work, then we'll drop from the full height of the telehandler to see what it would take to replicate what we see in the movie. We dropped my test dummy a few videos back and it was only 110 pounds and it made a decent thud. So I think we have a chance today. We'll be dropping the foot using this Sweeney trip. It's a 10,000 pound quick release and it's the same model they use on Mythbusters. I had the amazing opportunity of visiting Adam Savage in his cave recently. And so I had him sign this thing. It makes me very happy to be using this in videos. To make the foot on the dino stomper, I welded up some laser cut half inch plate and quarter inch wall tubing. And after an appropriately themed paint job, I had an ecology block delivered that I installed some concrete anchors into to bolt on the foot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Then to lift the foot, I installed some hoist rings, which immediately failed and the block came smashing down. So I knew this insert wasn't strong enough in pull-out strength to put it on the top face. I was thinking as long as we keep the strap pulling in sheer to this uh, anchor that we'd be fine, but the block kept wanting to roll over as we picked it up off the ground. And so the strap ended up pulling this out a little bit. And then once it pulled up, did some wild stuff to this that it's not designed to handle. And after a trip to the hardware store, we did what I should have done from the start, which was to use two straps and installed some proper anchors this time. Don't move. We're gonna drop the block out here in the grass just for a sense of space. The water on the truck is over there and then the puddle is over here. In the movie, we don't really know how far away the T-Rex was from the puddle, so we'll test both somewhat far away and right next to the puddle. This first drop is going to be one quarter the energy of a full-grown T-Rex. So this would simulate it tiptoeing or walking, not quite sprinting, or just a smaller T-Rex. In three, two, one. Yeah. Remember a couple videos back when I said, this is like the Cadillac of quick releases. It's super easy. This is definitely the heaviest load I've dropped on it. 4,000 pounds. This is 40% of what this thing's rated for. Did you feel something? I felt something. I was too busy jumping around yeah, to feel I, it. I felt it. Nice. It's standing up. I totally thought it would fall over. So the puddle saw nothing, but the cup surprisingly saw some movement, just not quite clear ripples like in the movie. If you happen to own a dinosaur zoo and are too blinded by hubris to recognize the danger of your creation, then this video's sponsor BetterHelp could be for you. BetterHelp allows you to connect with a therapist completely virtually and on your own schedule, and their whole goal is to make starting therapy easier. They make it super easy to choose a therapist that fits you really well, so for me, I'd be able to choose a therapist that's Christian because otherwise it just wouldn't make sense to talk to someone who doesn't uh, share my worldview. And if it turns out you don't connect with someone, they make it super easy to just move on to someone else. 
Therapy can be really great to be able to talk through issues you might be having. Like for me, a few years ago, I had some trouble with anxiety and it turns out I was just self-imposing a bunch of arbitrary expectations and deadlines for life goals and stuff, which I've since worked through. Having a caring and understanding and safe space to talk with someone is important and you can find that with BetterHelp's qualified and professional therapists. If you're struggling and you think you'd benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash Tyler Bell and get 10% off your first month of therapy. Estimates of Brachiosaurus weight ranges pretty widely, so I'm gonna pick somewhere in the middle with 110,000 pounds. Let's say when it was eating, its feet came down from about 12 feet. That's 1.7 million joules of energy. To recreate that with the dino stomper, it would need to go like 98 miles an hour and drop from about 320 feet. This telehandler will only get our block up to 35 feet. So there's that shot in the movie when you can see the lawyer through the mirror and the mirror vibrates. The guy who did that effect in the movie was explaining that he was listening to loud music when he got the idea. I don't know exactly how he did it, but here's my contraption. It's a little 12 volt motor with an offset weight. I'm sure you've all heard about the special effects guy that made the water cup ripple in the movie, how he attached a guitar string to the car. I've heard one account saying they attached it to the frame and another saying to the dashboard. Here's what I came up with. It's just a strong magnet with a guitar string attached to it and then a loop at the end for my boot to go through to pull down at just the right tension. This is 53 string. I don't know anything about that, but the heavier string seemed to work better. I just slip my boot through. There we go. Did anybody order some rain? No. One effect they add to cars in monster movies is making them bounce. You can see it in Godzilla 98 or War of the Worlds. I'm guessing they add pneumatic cylinders or airbags under the car. That'd be easy enough to sync them all up. You can actually see compressed air exhausting here. I'd like to give this a shot someday. Big thanks to Bill Duran from Punished Props for helping me weather the hat on this costume. He also gave me some tips on weathering the clothes, which I finished at home. I wanna give a big thanks to Sen Get Sen for hooking me up with material to build the dino stomper. I had some steel plate and gussets laser cut and a drill jig and stencil cut from hardboard. I knew you guys were probably rushing to the comments right now to say that it matters what kind of ground or soil the foot drops on. And we're at late summer right now, so the ground is as dry and hard as it's gonna get. Although it just rained pretty good last night, so it's getting a little soft. But my intuition tells me that the drier and firmer the ground, the better, that it'll transfer energy across a further distance. So this might help us out. We're being hunted. Estimates say that a T-Rex could have weighed up to 19,000 pounds and it looks like its foot dropped from about three feet in the movie while it was running. That would make about 77,000 joules of energy. To replicate that same energy with my dino stomper, I need to drop it from about 14 feet, and that should replicate a T-Rex sprinting. Again, a best case scenario. This is a full-grown T-Rex sprinting. Can you feel dinosaur footsteps in three, two, one? Did you? Yeah, I felt it on the gravel. The gravel? Okay, I was on the grass. I don't know if that matters. Surprisingly stable. It looks like it would be top heavy. Ooh. Come check this out. Dino DNA. Yet another example of my mediocre to poor welding. It looks like it wasn't even attached to the foot at all here, but the toe's totally bent as expected. A lot of energy. Holy cow, it actually rippled the cup, but just barely, and so I'm not totally satisfied with that. And we didn't see the puddle move. Ugh, that is so cool. The foot kind of looks more like a chicken with skinny legs, which is actually quite fitting according to one theory. It's a Unix system. I know this. This is my first time operating one of these, so it's cool to learn how this all works. It gives you a uh, cheat sheet depending on what equipment you have, and it tells you where you can take your load. Feet in elevation, feet in extension, and then degrees in uh, arc. So it's kind of cool. You can use that chart as a cheat sheet to know how high your load is without having to you know, measure with a string or something. And to make it repeatable for us, we can just say, for example, we'll go to D in boom extension and 35 degrees every time, and it's the same. 
they're gonna think you're underneath the load. Load envelope, load envelope. Last drop, I think it was way too far away from the puddle to really see anything. So this time, again, with the T-Rex sprinting drop, we're gonna stand right next to the puddle to see it with our own eyes and have it really close. And then we're also right next to the truck for the water cup. This is full-size T-Rex sprinting in three, two, one. It did it! It totally rippled just like the movie. And I, I definitely felt uh, like a, like a, like a, like, like a, a what? Like a. I'd say if the T-Rex is like you to there away, you're definitely going to feel it. Well, I think you'd see it before. <laughs> you're definitely going to see it. Unless it's like the one from Jurassic Park 3 where it's like. It just barely rippled in the cup, which is awesome that it could have actually indicated that a T-Rex was nearby. But it didn't exactly look like the one in the movie, so I wanted to test a little further. What? What are you grimacing at? The Dude, equipment? Now, was... by design, engineered tolerance. And you're right, Brandon, it probably fell over because this toe is bent. But I like how it just like cookie cutter dyes the ground. The point is, you are alive when they start to eat you. <laughs> This is so crazy, dude. I came up with this idea like two or three years ago. So our best case scenario drop from 14 feet to replicate a realistic scenario that would have happened in the movie didn't quite shake the ground like it appeared in the movie. So we're gonna do what Mythbusters always did and see what it takes to replicate the results of the movie. So we've lifted the block up to the max height that our lift will bring it to, and we've got it pretty close to the puddle and the truck. We'll see if that does it. This is about 35 feet. Okay, hold on to your butts. <laughs> I've been waiting three years to say that. In three, two, one. It definitely rippled the puddle and I definitely felt a good like bounce. At this point, I hadn't seen any footage of the water cup. Oh my God, it did it. Are you kidding me? Right there. Where? Right there. He moves right there. There. <gasps> Dude, no way. It did it. Dude. I totally thought that with all of the like rubber tires and the suspension and it being in a big car far away, I, had, I thought no chance that it would do it. But with the big drop, it absolutely did it just like the movie. Let's see how the foot's doing after all of those drops. Not so good. Oh, dang it. Wow, I suck at welding. Or I'm under equipped, both, a little bit of both. I definitely need a hotter welder. Yes, under the right circumstances, you can sense a T-Rex approaching through a cup of water or a puddle or feeling it through the ground. It definitely doesn't make the sound it does in the movie, but of course that's stylized. Let me know what movie physics or special effects I should test next. <laughs>